All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome into episode five of the free agency profile series. In this one, we're going to be breaking down a marquee free agent. Okay, I, I would argue the best free agent set to hit the open market. All right, there's a chance that he could be tagged, but we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. It's wide receiver from the Chicago Bears, Allen Robinson. Coming in at six foot two, 220 pounds, Allen Robinson is an absolute monster. He's an animal at the wide receiver position. He does so many things incredibly well. But before we get into his skill set, his uh, contract projection, his stats, all that good stuff, I do want to mention one thing, right? Luckily for us Jets fans here, it's really, really cool. So if you go on Allen Robinson's uh, social media, right, his Twitter specifically, you'll notice a similar trend. The amount of posts that Robinson actually interacts with, right, the tweets that he likes regarding the New York Jets, regarding him joining the New York Jets, it's unbelievable. It's almost unreal to a certain degree, like how many tweets how many tweets he actually likes like it's not some secret he's not liking tweets about you know pittsburgh or houston or philly or wherever you know the raiders it's just jets it's just jets everywhere it's like flooding his thing so it, it's no secret that alan robinson has some level of interest in, jo in joining this team, all right? Now, you're looking at a potential fit. The Jets have that dire, dire need for a true number one wide receiver. We have the money to pay him. So on the surface, it looks like a perfect fit. Now, some people have argued, okay, well, he's not the perfect system fit for the uh, Kyle Shanahan for the Mike LaFleur system. Typically, you want like a shorter, shiftier guy that can separate consistently, right? Uh, get that step on cornerbacks, do really well in, in slants in the short passing game, guys that work really well with the football in, in their hands. But I would push back and say, you know what? Go back and look at Atlanta. Look at the Atlanta Falcons when Kyle Shanahan was there. Nobody's really like like looking at the at the Falcons offense back when Matt Ryan won the MVP, back when Shanahan was the offensive coordinator, back when they made it to the Super Bowl, that infamous season where they blew the lead against New England. You look at that season of Julio Jones, he wasn't the quote-unquote perfect fit for that offense, but he was a true X and they made it work. I feel like Allen Robinson would take on a similar role if he were to join the New York Jets, right? A guy that can just win on one-on-one -on -one matchups. He does so many things. So let me backtrack. Let's kind of start over and really attack this thing. The number one thing I like the most about Allen Robinson, there's a lot, a lot of things to like, but for me personally, the number one thing that stands out is that he's a consistent producer. What do I mean? It doesn't matter what team he's playing on. It doesn't matter what offensive system he's playing in. It doesn't matter who's hurt around him. It doesn't matter who's throwing him the football. It could be Mitch Trubisky. It could be Nick Foles. It could be Blake Bortles. It doesn't matter. If Allen Robinson is on the field, healthy, ready to go, he's he's making plays. He's racking up stats. He's scoring touchdowns. He's picking up a lot of yards. Allen Robinson is a true number one wide receiver. Not to mention, he has great size against six foot two, 220 pounds. He does a great, great job of boxing out corners. I mean, look at ev every single third down. If you want to, if you, if you're a defensive coordinator out there and you're putting a cornerback on a one on one matchup on third down against Allen Robinson, it's game over. It's game over. The Bears will pick up that first down. It's as simple as that. You watch the plays that this guy makes on, you know, not so accurate of footballs, right? Th these throws aren't the best. Now, sometimes they're great, but sometimes they're not. If it's a wounded duck, if the ball is late, Allen Robinson can make up for it. Huge catch radius. He does such a good job with curl routes, with working the boundary, even like middle of the field stuff too, like 15 and ends off of play action, goal line fades. Robinson's skill set reminds me a lot actually of um, X Jet. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, X Jet and X Bear, Brandon Marshall. I feel like they kind of play the same way. They're not the same player, but they both have similar strengths and weaknesses. Just a guy who can make plays. Who's a guy who can make plays consistently, make plays on a week to week basis? The Jets don't have that guy. I like Crowder. I love Denzel Mims. I'm hoping Mims takes a huge step, especially because of the offensive, you know, system change with the with the new coaching staff coming in the building. I'm hoping that we kind of open it up a little bit more, especially down the field. But uh, Allen Robinson is on a whole nother level. He's next level. He's borderline elite wide receiver. Um, not top five, but he's 1,000% top 10. So if the Jets right now are look. Number one, we're looking at our offensive ranks in last year or in recent memory, like dead last, 31, 30, like so horrible, right? Absolutely nauseating. 
and we have the opportunity to go out and get a top 10 wide receiver i think the jets should be all over that now i i did say this earlier i did mention it the bears could tag Allen robinson that is something to note. There also has been a lot of rumors that that's the direction that they're pointing to. And especially with them being in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes, we could possibly see an Allen Robinson, Deshaun Watson pairing in Chicago. It's unlikely, but it could happen. All right. Now, they definitely have some things to work out as far as the cap is concerned. I don't think Robinson wants to be back playing on a franchise tag, especially because he signed that three year contract. I think it was a three year, $42 million deal back in 2018. He lived up to that contract. Yeah, he missed a few games here and there but I mean for the quarterback play in Chicago for just it was just so many so much turmoil for the Bears offense over these last couple of seasons for him to be the the consistent staple week in week out week in week out I think that says something all right now he also produced in Jacksonville but let's take a look at the 2020 statistics and kind of see how he did so in 16 games for the Chicago Bears last season he had 102 catches 102 catches off of 151 targets. That's pretty good. 67.5 catch percentage. Um, you're looking at that offense. They don't really have a dynamic playmaker. They have a couple of guys that, you know, you have to kind of worry about if you're a defensive coordinator, Terry Cohen, uh, maybe an Anthony Miller. But at the end of the day, everybody knows Robinson is the engine of that Bears offense. He's the guy. He's the premier guy on the Bears offense. Defensive coordinators know, okay, we have to worry about him first and foremost. And yet he's still producing, again, with the bad quarterback play. All right, 1,250 receiving yards. Great. That's fantastic. Six touchdowns a little low but Allen Robinson has never really had or he's never really been that you know that double digit touchdown guy he's always kind of been in the range of six to nine somewhere in there he did absolutely dominate one season with the Jacksonville Jaguars I believe in 20 it was either 2014 or 2015 where he had crazy amounts of yards crazy i think he had over 1400 yards pro ball wide receiver that was the season where, uh season where robinson really popped onto the scene everybody knew who he was at that point um but so all in all we're looking at the 2020 statistics fantastic year right he seemed healthy played a bunch of uh, in a bunch of games racked up over 1200 receiving yards that's great got in the end zone a couple times i think robinson right now especially considering the circumstances that the bears offense you know was currently in or, or was in last year in 2020 we'll see what happens this season i think he did a tremendous job for the bears offense last season okay so as far as weaknesses are concerned i guess he's not like whenever you're talking about a top 10 player at a position in the NFL, it's hard to talk about like weaknesses or things to kind of bring him back down to earth. But he's not the fastest guy out there. He's not the quickest guy. He's not the most elusive. And he has battled some injuries. He's had the ACL. And I feel like another, I don't want to say weakness, but just a concern with Allen Robinson is like, you're not going to get this guy in a one-year $9 million contract. You're not. If you bring Robinson in, you're going to pay top dollar, which leads me to the contract projection. What I think Robinson will be paid, I'm going to assume it'll be, and I've seen kind of offers all over the map, again, assuming he doesn't get franchise tagged here, I'm going to say four years, $75 million. I, I think that's a fair deal, deal for Robinson. I think he's one of the premier wide receivers in this league. I think he's shown the shown the ability. Hey, if you're if you don't really have the quarterback position figured out, throw it up to me. I'm coming down with the football. I'll score a couple times. I'll rack up a ton of yards. I'll rack up a ton of touchdowns. I'll come up with clutch plays on third down. I'll work really well in the boundaries, really well in the red zone. I can make it work. I can fit in multiple systems. I'm a beast. I'm I'm dominant, right? So Right now, this is a Jets team that it doesn't have much talent at all. We still don't really know what's happening at the quarterback position. Could it be Darnold? Could it be Watson? Could it be Wilson, Field, Lance? Who knows? Mac Jones? I don't know. So I would say four years, $75 million. That rounds out to a little over $18.5 million a season. That's a lot of money. I've seen a couple of projections around, you know, 80, 85 million dollars. And I could definitely see something like that. But with the salary cap number going down, I think four years, 75 million dollars is realistic, especially for the Jets, where it's a big market. Robinson wants to play in a big market. He's shown that that level of interest on social media. And of course, that's not the end all be all. I don't want to take likes on social media as like the voice of God or anything like that, or that this is what Alan Robinson is going to do because there's so much that goes into it. Um, you know, from especially from Robinson's perspective, he doesn't know who's playing quarterback. Like he, he probably has question marks as well, but I feel like right now, still weeks away from, from free agency, even beginning, 
think Robinson is looking at the Jets, saying, I could be the best wide receiver on the team. I will be the number one wide receiver on the team. I'll be playing in a huge market with a brand new coaching staff. Players want to play for Robert Sala. They want to get into the Mike LaFleur offense. We want to, I want to turn this thing around. I want to help turn this ship around with a bunch of options at quarterback. Uh, again, they could stick with Darnold. They can move on, whatever. I feel like the Jets will make the best decision um, for the team moving forward. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section about Allen Robinson. Do you like him? Is he overrated? Would you pay him? Do you think he's, you know, just too much hype? Because I've heard fans on both sides. I think at the end of the day, if the Bears don't franchise tag him and the Jets were to bring Robinson in, I mean, man, I, I might just go crazy. Right? I, I, I can't even think of what can't even think of a, the video I would, I would be making. I would just be totally, totally pumped up. So Robinson to the Jets, it's a possibility. A lot of connections. We can connect a lot of dots. I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.